Good evening and welcome to the Option Pit webinar of the month. I am Mark Sebastian. Uh, I'd like to remind everybody that this is for educational purposes only. None of this should be considered investment advice. Options have risk. Consult your financial professional. Uh, basically, if you hear something and then do something, it is your fault, not ours. All right? Just to be aware. And uh, for those of you that don't know me that well, um, let's, uh, let's get moving. Maybe it's a new name. And then, slideshow from the beginning. So, trading VIX, trading the VIX and the VIX ETPs, which stands for Exchange Traded Products. I get that asked a lot. So, again, the old disclosure, and this is me. This, well, this is me four years ago. Um, plus 10 pounds, minus, minus four years. Um, but uh, I was a trader on the SIBO and the Amex for about a decade. Uh, since then, I started Option Pit. We are an education and consulting company. I also run a hedge fund called Carmen Line Capital that is, trades VIX and SPX. Uh, so if you are a qualified investor and you have interest in something like that, you can reach out to me. Um, and uh, in addition to that, I do some side work for the SIBO. So you guys are about to learn some stuff on VIX from the guy who literally teaches the VIX course for the SIBO sometimes. So, uh, and in fact, I am going to be doing something on VIX in August for them. Uh, so we're going to talk about what is implied volatility, uh, what is the VIX, ways to trade VIX, ways to trade the VIX ETPs, and some strategies for trading. All right, so um, some of the beginning of this, if you've seen my introduction to the VIX course, there's a little bit that's, that overlaps, but there's a lot that doesn't, especially at the end, so you're going to want to stick around. So volatility. Volatility is a measure of movement uh, of an underlying instrument over a period of time regardless of direction. All right, so volatility and variance are very similar. The difference is variance is over a data set, and volatility is over a time series. Uh, the higher the volatility, the higher the movement and or expected movement of the underlying. When I discuss volatility, no matter how long to expiration, the number is annualized. So what does annualized mean? That means that uh, if I'm looking at a contract that expires on Friday and I'm looking at its volatility, that volatility is an annualized number. It is not what the volatility is expected to be between now and expiration. It's what the annualized volatility is supposed to be between now and that option's expiration. Do we understand the difference? Good. So what makes trading volatility different than trading a stock? And I am a volatility trader, so I can tell you that over the long term, we know where implied volatility of a stock or index is going to go. We don't know where the underlying price is going to go. IV mean reverts. And, you know, I love to show... Apple, this is from you know, last Thursday, uh, Apple stock, you see a mean there? You know, stocks will have some near-term mean reversion, right? They'll, if they go too far too fast, they'll, they'll mean revert a little bit, maybe like we see over, over in here. Okay, but long-term, I mean, Apple's just gone straight up. Amazon's gone straight up. Meanwhile, let's look at VXAPL, which is the VIX, which I'm going to talk about here in a second. But it's an index of implied volatility in Apple. And you take a look at that thing and you tell me. So the red is the 50-day moving average, and the, the gray line is the 200-day moving average. thing is flat as a pancake. Okay, that is a sure sign that there's some sort of mean. All right, that means there is a mean. So mean reversion. So again, a stock can go anywhere and stay there. And volatility can go anywhere, right? Volatility can go to 200, but it won't stay there. It will go back to where we are now, which is 9 at some point. Understanding this will help you with understanding buy-sell decisions and cycling. 
So most traders think mean reversion is an instantaneous thing. It is not. All right. Vols can stay low for very long periods of time. See July 2012 to 2014 and a half. See July 2016 to June to where we are now. You know, we've had a couple of small blips, but not much. All right. But vols can also get sky high. Look what happened in at, like starting in August of 2015 through January of 2016 and again October 2016. It can stay up for a while. In October of 2016, it was for a couple of weeks. In August of 2015, it was for four or five months. So it's important not to have kind of a recency or a proximity bias to understand how high and low volatility can get. The assumption that every spike will just get sold off, will just get sold is a bad assumption. It is a bad assumption, right? Volatility can stay high for a very long period of time. So let's talk about what happens in low vol. And this is where we are, and this is why I feel like a lot of people think they're smarter than they are, all right? And why there's so many educators out there saying, oh, I can teach you how to make money. Look at my track record from the last year. Well, it's been easy to make money the, the last year. It has not been that difficult, all right? There are times where it becomes exceedingly difficult to make money. All right. Now is not one of those times. All right. So money can seem easy, but it can go away exceedingly quickly if you don't have good risk management. All right. Generally speaking, what I say now in an environment like now, where most of the time it's not that hard to make money. If we get a real vol spike, I am out of the way and I'll either get back in when it cools off or I'll be in a position in a lot of cash to take advantage. Generally speaking, the way I position things now in an ultra low environment like we're in, it is great to be short premium. It really is. But uh, it's almost always better to be in net long options. So what do I mean by that? Why is it great to be short premium? Well, let me show you SPX. Or SP, yeah, yeah we could pull up SPX. And I want to pull up a chart. All right, and this is a vol chart. And what I want to show you, the red line is 30-day IV, similar to VIX. The blue line is 20-day historical volatility. So how much has the S&P actually moved? And look at the spread. It's three and a half points. That's pretty decent. All right? And then if I pull up 10-day, you can see in some of these low of all environments, it can get even wider. So it's not that bad to be short premium in low vol. People are afraid of it, but it's not that bad. So my general assumption is that when vol spikes, it wants to revert back to a normal volatility period. And until it proves it won't, I'll get it out of the way. And that is a puts you in a much better position to make money. When IV is high, it will fall back. All right. Net long options means negative theta. That is incorrect. Net long options means you're a net owner of, of, of options, not a net owner of premium. Right? So if I sell one option at a dollar and I own two options for 20 cents, I am long premium. I'm just long options as well. All right, so now, when, I, when IV is high, it will fall back. But spikes, which are usually short, can be long. All right, most spikes are a day or two. 
Some are a few are are days to a few weeks. Few are longer than a month. When that happens, IV can stay high for months at a time or a year. How do you determine how to get out of, when to get out of the way? Generally speaking, when the VIX cash it gets over a future that's around 30 days to expire, I am out of the way. All right, which we'll talk about here in a second. Because we got to get into VIX. So that's the thing is high vol, usually most spikes are, you know, a day, day and a half, and they go away. Some can be a few days, like we saw in October of 2016. Some can be months, like August 2015 through January of 2016. And we've seen ones that are a year, like 2008. All right, so let's talk about the VIX. The VIX is the SIBO Volatility Index. The purpose of the index is to gauge the buying and selling of options in the S&P 500. So it gauges cost of insurance. The idea is that when there is more buying over selling, generally the market is trying to buy protection. When there is more selling than buying, the market is not out seeking protection, it's selling protection. So VIX up, cost of insurance is up, and vice versa. Now, similar to the S&P, the index is not actually traded. All right, you, you guys are aware, you can't go out and buy one SPX or one Russell 2000. Okay? You can buy spiders. You can buy um, the S&P 500 futures, which correlate highly to the S&P 500, but you can't go out and buy the S&P 500. You can recreate the S&P 500 with a basket. That will highly correlate to the S&P. However, the VIX, you can't even do that. So the VIX, is, the VIX, you can't trade a basket to recreate. Closest you can get is a 30-day variant swap, which is an OTC market trade. The VIX is essentially an estimate of implied volatility on the S&P 500 options that has a constant duration of 30 days. Constant duration means that it will attempt to constantly mimic a portfolio, the volatility of a portfolio, with 30 days to expire. So the VIX is a look at annualized volatility in the S&P 500 that has 30 days to expiration all the time. So the weighting of the VIX puts more emphasis on at-the-money options. The weighting of the VIX puts more emphasis on out-of-the-money options than out-of-the-money calls. All right. It uses the two weekly options closest to 30 days to expiration. One that is equal to the, or less than 30 days, the other that is more. So if you look right now at the SPX, all right, and we're looking for options that expire in about 30 days, right now we're using the July 21s, AMs, and we're using the July 14s. It only uses Friday options. It doesn't use the, the other ones. The VIX is quoted as a price, but it's really a percentage. Volatility, despite not being spoken of as a percent, is always a percent. So VIX of 10 is actually 10% annualized volatility. It's the expected movement over the next 30 days on an annualized basis. This is the VIX as of Thursday over the last year. This is why you have to be aware of that spikes can keep going, right? You can see recently we've had a few blips. Boom, boom. Boom, boom. Trumper tantrum right there. Boom, boom. Right back down. Mini Trumper tantrum. Boom, and down. Or excuse me. Goldman call. Boom, back down. But take a look. This was Hillary is in trouble. All right, this is Brexit back here. So in what has been a really unvolatile year, 
the VIX has been over 25 and below 10. So not that unvolatile. What is the difference between a basket of one share of each? So, Andrew, the thing is, is that because the S&P is weighted by um, market cap, if you buy one share of each, you don't actually have the S&P 500, right? There's actually more Amazon, Microsoft, Google, uh, ExxonMobil, Procter & Gamble in the S&P 500 than there is uh, the, the smaller companies. So to recreate a basket of the S&P 500, you actually end up owning all sorts of weird ratios of, st of stocks. Um, you, and you basically need a, a computer to calculate the basket for you. So the VIX negatively correlates with the SPX. When SPX is up, VIX is generally down. When SPX is down, VIX is generally up. This makes sense. As generally, when the market sells off, volatility does increase. There's also the nature of similar movement against a lower number. All right, so let's think about this. Uh, five years ago, when the S&P was 1,600, a 16-point move, like we had today, was 1%. That is a VIX of 16. Now that the S&P is 2,400, the 16-point move we had today is two-thirds of a percent. That's a VIX of 10. Right? When you think about it that way, I mean, you remember in 08 when 16, I mean, in 2008, 16 points was a huge move because the S&P was 800. All right. In addition, there are some features, namely based on skew, which I don't really need to get into, that cause the calc to naturally increase on a sell-off. So one thing to be aware of is when the market's selling off, the VIX almost inherently has to go up, whether there's lots of buying or not. All right, so now let's talk about the characteristics of VIX options and futures. They are European exercise. This means there's no early exercise, all right? They have a unique settlement procedure that's based on VIX Mo called the VRO, and it's not VIX itself. At 30 days to expire, VIX futures have a beta to VIX of about 0.5. So if the VIX is up 40 cents, VIX futures will be up 20 to 25. As time passes and the VIX future gets closer to expiration, it starts to correlate better and better to VIX. So today, the June future, which expires tomorrow morning, highly correlated to VIX. The July future, which expires in a month, not so much. All right, so let's talk about the VIX futures. They are the most successful product introduced in the last 20 years. They trade out eight months. Each month trades independently. All right, so if you look at S&P 500 futures, they are straight up tied together, all right? There is a, the difference between an S&P 500 future expiring tomorrow and an S&P 500 future expiring in September, which is now the front month contract, is cost of carry. That is it, all right? VIX futures do not trade that way, all right? They are based on volatility expectations. All right, so they do not move in unison. They, they're, they're connected, but they're not tied in the same way. So they're, it's more like cracking a whip than it is moving a, a bar, which is what s and is like. They are in, there's weekly futures now that don't trade very much. And they're in a contango <coughs> about 80% of the time, which means front-month futures are usually cheaper than long-term futures. 
Typically, they're used as hedges against a long portfolio. This is the futures curve from last Thursday. And what I want you to notice is that you can see that it's not a smooth curve, right? December looks kind of cheap. Well, look, they're looking at Christmas seasonality. January is expensive. They're looking at the January effect. July and August are cheap. Now, VIX options, they are by far the most successful option project, product from the last 20 years. They trade out eight months. Each month trades independently. Again, each month trades independently. All right? And the underlying of them is the future, not the VIX cash. Uh, so, the weekly options in VIX, though, do trade actively. They trade pretty actively. Not crazy. You know, they're not like the main contracts. They're not like the weeklies in S&P yet. All right. Uh, but uh, they do trade. Are the VIX futures any good at predicting the length of volatility? They're excellent at it, actually. VIX futures are far more accurate at where volatility is going to go than the, the cash index. So remember, the underlying is the future, not the VIX cash. And these are great portfolio hedges. I'm not going to get a hedging, but they are. that is where most of the trading is, is in hedging. Volume of options. VIX options are super liquid. Super liquid. They trade over hybrid. All right. So you guys, so hybrid means that they're electronic and open outcry. So you guys are going to trade mostly open outcry, but almost all in my fund, almost all of my trading is done open outcry. Now, what does that mean? That means I call a broker, I find a price, and the broker trades it for me. I never, I never within my fund, I mean this, since the launch of my fund, I have never pushed a button to do a trade. I've always picked up the phone. All right, and if you want to trade real size, it actually, you get better pricing. But that's the beauty of VIX options. You'll see these huge trades go up, and they're generally, the big trades are generally better priced than, um, why do I always use a broker with my fund? Because they, I'm trading enough size that I need to find that they, if they find the other side, I will get a better price than if I go electronic. And my brokers almost always find the other side of my trade. Yes. So in the last two weeks, the smallest trade I've done what the smallest size I've done in a trade is 250. Um, normally, my size is like 5,000. So, yeah, if you if you're going to get some real size, you're going to get better pricing getting somebody on the other on the other end. So th that being said, these are super tight markets. Nickel wide most of the time, dime wide, and really the inside market is when I get a quote, it's usually four cents wide, five at the most. What counterparty takes the other side? Actually, usually it's um, usually it's another fund, or it's somebody engaged in hedging activity. VIX activity. Now, obviously, this is older. You can see. But I want to show you what kind of a normal day will look like. I mean, this isn't a crazy day. Um, you notice the volume on this day is 825,000 contracts. The open interest, almost 8 million. Average volume, 750,000. And then look at these trades. You know, like I said, 
I let, last week I sold 5,000 call spreads against something else I was doing. That would have not even hit this, this screen. So that's something you need to be aware of. All right. So now let's use let's talk about using options. So recall recall that um, the at the money strike is not the cash value. All right, the at the money to VIX is not the cash VIX. Um, the at the money is the future. So if you look at this in July, at the at the money option was the twelve and a halfs. And in August, the at the monies would have been the 13s of the 13 and a halfs. That's what it comes down to. So let's talk about how to trade short as a VIX trader. Two main ways to do it are short call spreads or long puts. All right. I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna go out and say for retail traders. Straight short calls in VIX are, generally speaking, going to be a bad idea. All right. So I would only sell call spreads. I personally am almost never naked short calls. Uh, I mean, and when I, and when I am net short calls, I always have kind of long futures or something against them underneath. All right. Both have great characteristics, but they do different things. So let's talk about trading the short call spread. So selling a call spread, all right, here's how to do it. You sell a call spread, all right. Execute a short call spread when you think the VIX may move around or be safe or be stable, all right. You don't, you do not expect the underlying to move above a given price. You have, you'll have limited income, but will produce profits more consistently than short puts or long puts. All right. So selling a, you know, I'll just give you an example. All right. I don't think I'm worried about VIX going to 12, 12 and a half. Um, I don't think VIX is going to get above 15. I don't think VIX is going to be above 16. So I have um, a short 16, 19 call spread on in the fund. All right, now it's hedged off in, in other places. It's not just naked. I'm never naked. But you have limited income, but you produce profits pretty consistently. All right. Now, the other way, and this is the way I really, I really like this approach for retail traders. I think this is a really cool way to trade. So I like trading long puts if, as in a retail account. It simulates being short a future, but in in exchange for a little bit of time premium, you have capped losses. All right, the premium is far less than out of the money spreads, and they're useful for what I call a convergence trade, which is I think the best way to trade these things during contango. So you're betting the future will grind lower towards fixed cash. So if you look, if I do a July put spread here. All right at the time of this picture, VIX was 11 and 40. The July future was 12.6. Well, all other things being equal, if nothing exciting happens, this July future needs to get to 11 and 40. So I, you know, I'll just pull up what we're looking at today. All right, still like the future. We have this trade on in this, our strategy letter that we have in Option Pit Live. VIX is 1085. I can buy the 11 and a half 10 put spread, which is 50 at 65. I bought a 10 lot this morning for this is my this is my the my little play account personal account. This is not my fund account. Um, I, I paid 55 cents this morning. All right, so I'm paying 55 cents for something that is 64 cents in the money. 
Does that compute? All right. Does that com think about that? I'm paying 55 cents. I'm selling it out of the money option, and I'm buying an, uh, an option that is technically out of the money. Right? July is 12.30, but it's actually in the money because it's 64 cents in the money relative to cash. So I'm planning. I'm tra I'm putting a trade on that expects July to converge. converge to uh, the cash. I mean, if so, if VIX settled here today, I'd make 10 cents. And I just bought it today. It's the only product where that can happen. All right, so let's talk about trading. Oh, buh, 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 buh. I don't know what I just did. All right, when using options to trade for a higher VIX, all right, Typically, the most favorable call is one that's slightly out of the money or right at the money. Buying a call that's at the money and selling it out of the money call can allow for super cheap, cheap bullish verticals. All right? And I actually just put a note about this out for, uh, I read a weekly note for uh, Tullet Prebon on Vol. All right? And I put it out this morning. Um, and uh, if you want it, you can email me marketoptionpit.com and I'll send it to you. Um, but uh, if you buy a, uh, an at the money VIX call and sell an out of the money, you can set up a really cheap trade. And that's because VIX has a crazily steep VIX vertical skew. So call spreads are actually better for hedging than straight calls if you know what you're doing. So take a look here. All right, this is an older, this is a picture from Thursday. But remember, the August future was 13 and a half. I could buy a 14 call and sell an August 25 call and pay less than a dollar. This is Thursday. So I get to hedge. 11 points of VIX movement all the way up to 25, about the high for the year. And it costs me 97 cents. How's that for a favorable risk reward on a hedge? All right, so people always say, well, how do I hedge VIX? How do I hedge using VIX if, you know, with VIX always getting pummeled? I'll tell you how. That. You know, same thing with VXX if used as a hedge. Well, VXX is a little different. Um, the reason why is VXX has this weird, what we call roll, uh, roll decay. And it's not roll yield. That's wrong. Is the VIX skew like the mirror image of, of SPX options? It's, it's, it's related, but not the mirror image. because of the way variance works. I like hedging with a call spread in VIX better than in VXX. Um, and so, because it's very easy for me to quantify in, in like August where the VIX future is relative to the VIX cash. VXX, that becomes far more difficult because of kind of the way things are moving. Um, so I think for hedging, if I'm hedging a real portfolio, I think hedging in the VIX itself is far superior to hedging in the ETPs, like VXX. All right, so let's talk about the volatility ETNs. Trading the VIX futures has become huge. All right, now, there's these volatility ETNs. Now, they have a stated purpose, but they don't do a great job. So this is my favorite. So we all know who King Sisyphus was from Greek mythology. All 
right? So Sisyphus thought he was smarter than Zeus. He had what we call hubris. So Zeus, in his own cleverness, enchanted a boulder into rolling away from King Sisyphus before he reached the top, which ended up consigning Sisyphus to an eternity of useless efforts and unending frustration. Thus came the word Sisyphean, which is what VXX really is. VXX, or IPATH S&P 500 Short-Term Futures ETN, attempts to replicate being long a VIX futures portfolio with a concentration of 30 days. The intent of the fund is to allow traders to get long or short near-dated forward volatility. The fund does this by constantly rolling out of the front month futures and into the second month. Would you run a business that bought a product for 16.10 and sold it at 15.5? The answer is no. So what I want you to think about is what really happens with VIX, with VXX, is at 30 days to expiration, it owns an, a portfolio that is entirely long the June future. And then every day, it sells off a little bit of it, as long as VIX below VIX futures and VIX futures converge, it sells off a little bit of it at a worse price than it bought it for. So it's buying high and selling low. Then it goes back to July and does the same thing. So the term roll yield is, is incorrect. It's really a roll decay. So VXX loses money because VIX futures decay. It's not roll yield. A lot of people think that it's the relationship of this to this that causes VXX to lose money. It's actually the relationship of this to the VIX cash that causes VIX to, VXX to lose money. I don't understand the nature of your question, John. So this is what VXX has looked like since from the life of the fund. So on day one, if you bought $25,000 worth of VXX, you now have $13. That's an incredible amount of wealth destruction. So VXX is rolling itself to zero. It should not be held for more than a few hours. It's great to play long if you're going to hold it for a couple hours. It is a great day trading product to go long vol or short vol. And if you have a portfolio that is naturally long vol, you can use VXX to hedge. So one thing we could, we've looked at is I've got a big hedge in VIX, I can partially finance it with something like VXX or UVXY, which we'll talk about in a minute. So similar products, worse result. VXZ is mid the midterm. It's not nearly as bad as VXX, but it's still bad. UVXY, double long levered. It's actually worse than twice as bad as VXX. Same thing with TVX, but, but UVXY has options. XVZ, if one, some, one, someone wants to hold a buy and hedge. So let's say I thought volatility could increase over the next two or three weeks. I could maybe get away with using XVZ. That's about it. All right, so let's talk about some approaches to using ETN options. So. When VIX is in a normal contango, I have an IRA strategy I use. All right? I buy puts in UVXY that are at the money, expiring in 18 months to two years. And then every time UVXY announces a reverse split, I sell it and go long at the money again. When the VIX futures curve goes flat, I will consider unwinding it. Generally speaking, I never hold short ETNs when the VIX curve is backwards. All right. There are other ways I'll trade it. I may go long front month against the back month stuff. 
But generally speaking, I unwind my delta, my exposure, when the VIX curve flattens. My little IRA strategy. All right, so this is a nice one that I like. This is a UVXY fly, call fly with puts. This was the June 30 contract, and this trades up money already, even with the move today. I'm long 10 of the 10 and a half puts. This thing was killing it yesterday. I'm long 10 of the 14 calls, short uh, 20 of the 18 calls, long 20 of the 22 calls. My net cost is $1.30. Just a simple, near-term, short UVXY, long, long butterfly. Super simple trade. We do these in our strategy letter all the time. All right. Now the inverse ETNs. I do like the inverse ETNs. The inverse ETNs are theoretically going to infinity, but the problem is they're all daily tracking, so they have some problems. So being short, VXX actually pays better than being long XIV. So there's XIV, which is the inverse of VXX. There's ZIV, which is the inverse of VXZ. And there's SVXY, which is basically XIV, but it's, it has options. So SVXY can be a fun thing to trade. And what I want to show you is I really, for a, a, a hands-off portfolio like ZIV, right, it, it's a much more low vol passive strategy than uh, XIV. It's done really well, and it doesn't have some of the volatilities of, of XIV when futures are backward. So I want to show you, this is just kind of over the last year, this ETN has gone from below 45 all the way up to 67. It's way outperformed XIV. It's got a real nice pattern to it. So in summary, VIX options have unique characteristics. IV and VIX are correlated. Bear and bull plays have different strategies. Play the spikes the right way. All right, so this says Condor, but it's really the VIX intensive. So we already, we've done a VIX primer that's really good. This is going to be different. It's going to build on that. All right. Um, it's going to be a, a, a mini master class. So if you trade the VIX options, all right, you're gonna, if you want to learn how to trade out the VIX options, we're going to do two hours on VIX options, two hours on the VIX ETPs. Uh, we're going to show you some cool things with the inverses, XIV and ZIV. We're going to show you some more cool things with the UVXY and VXX. I'm going to show you how to set up hedges with VIX and some other things. And we're actually going to talk about how to trade VIX, XIV, and VXX with a long equity portfolio. All right. And it's normally $347. So when it goes in the store, it's going to be $347, the recordings. Right now it's 197. Sign up by Friday and it's and use code 25 underscore off and you have to use all caps. Take an extra 25 bucks off. Go to optionpit.com slash VIXMaster. All right. And if you sign up tonight, if you sign up tonight, I will let you pick between the volatility primer or the VIX primer to have to watch between now and when we do this next class. All right, this class is going to be about 50% overlap with the VIX primer, but the stuff that we don't cover, and but that's kind of the nature of VIX, um, but the 50% the that it overlap is going to pay for the class. I, I can tell you that much. So what I'm basically saying is use that code 25 underscore off, and if you sign up, by the opening bell tomorrow, I will let you pick between the volatility primer or the VIX primer out of our store. All right, so I'd like you to get yourself signed up ASAP. 
Um, go to optionpit.com slash VIXmaster. Any questions? You're welcome, Kathy. I always try and bring some value. I mean, I don't want to waste your guys' time. I'm here to sell something, obviously, but, you know, if you don't buy something, I want you to keep coming to this and telling your friends how good I am. And it, thanks a lot for the very informative webinar. Is it possible to get copied to the slide deck? Yeah, shoot me an email. And like I said, if you shoot me an email, I'll send you my latest um, VIX thing I wrote up for Tullet Prebon on, on how to set up, why I like setting up hedges. Oh, I'm glad you like that. The, uh, you talk about Teen Witch? Top that? <laughs> yeah, that's, uh, I like to try and throw in some entertainment. That's from like 1984. Actually, you know, the redheaded girl is um, Taylor Swift's older sister. Not Taylor Swift. Who's the girl that's married to Ryan, Ryan Reynolds? Blake, that's Blake Lively's older sister. Did you know that? Um, again, e email me and I'll, I'll email it back. Yeah, like I said, and then um, if you sign up for this webinar, I'll send you the VIX primer. You'll be in a great place. Um, and if you can't make the class on Saturday, it's this Saturday, by the way. If you can't make the class on Saturday, we will record it and, and have it posted. And here's one thing to be aware of, folks. If you are an Option Pit Live member paying $125 a month, guess what? Saturday's class is free. So you can pay the one, something to think about. I won't send you the other, uh, you know, you can attend this class for free if you and get my get access to me on a daily basis for 125 a month and we do 10 webinars a year 10 Saturday classes a year or you can sign up for the class the one off it's a little bit of a duh All right, and if you sign up tonight for Option Pit Live and you're brand new, I'll let you watch the, um, VIX, the VIX or Vault Primer as well. Any other questions? Um, my fund is entirely uh, based on trying to produce income. We are not a hedging fund. We're a hedge fund, but we don't hedge. We try and produce income. I am just like I say, I'm a net seller premium, but I'm always long options on it. I do. I, I would call my fund vol, volatility arb more. Hedge funds don't hedge, but you know that. I do hedge my trades actually. Yeah, one of the joys you get if you're an Optifit Live member is you'll see me and Andrew talking about what we're doing in the fund sometimes. 
which is a entirely separate company. The two are not directly related. They just happen to have two managers that also work at Option Pit. You're welcome. Any other questions before I uh, go finish up the Cubs game? All right. I will have, so the recording, if you're looking for the recording tomorrow, it is going to be, if you go to our events page, and you click on, and I'm going to send you the, the link that will actually, it'll be like, why are you making me sign up for this course? So right now if you click on Mastering Trading VIX and VIX ETPs, there's Understanding the VIX, which is a uh, one I did like a year ago. Um, this webinar will be right there. So I'm not sending you a, a sales link. I'm actually sending you a link to the, the video as well. All right, guys. I hope everybody has a great evening. I want to thank you guys for coming. Thanks for giving me, you know, an hour of your time. It's always fun talking to a good crowd. And uh, like I said, get yourself signed up, and uh, you will not be disappointed. Have a great day.